Floss Tube, it is New Year's Eve and I decided that a great way to spend my New Year's Eve is to do my final Floss Tube video of the year and then once I finish this video I'm going to film one more and get that uploaded hopefully today as well which is going to be going through my 40 starts for my 40th birthday next year one by one showing you the bag it's in, the fabric, the chart, and the threads, and whether I've changed those threads. That's gonna be a long one. This one should be pretty short because I have three things to show you. They're all finishes. I have um, some favorite things, mainly plants, because it's been, it's been a week, but I'll also tell you about that because I kind of, it's not vague booking if it's on Instagram, maybe it's vague gramming, but earlier this week, the, the holidays had been really stressful and had been a lot. So I'll go into that and kind of tell you what, what is up. But I'll show you finishes first. Little, little happy thing for those that are here just for the stitching. Okay. All the fun things. Do, 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 do. It looks like I took the chart out, but you know what? Charts aren't really that important when it's done because you don't need to see the picture because it's finished. Um, of course, none of these are ironed because that's just not how I roll when there are finishes. This first one <clears throat> is Plum Street Samplers, A Ghoul Tide Welcome. It's done. This is on Under the Sea Fabrics Properly Primitive. It is very similar to Picture This Plus Velt, but I think that the modeling in this one is more subtle, but it gives you the browns and the greens, but in a much more subtle way. At least the pieces are properly primitive that I've had. I have a big chunk upstairs that I've kind of been hoarding for some. I did change a few colors in this one just to kind of give it more of a darker vibe. Some of the oranges went a little richer, but for the most part, it's all the same. And I did post those changes on my Instagram. And if anybody wants them, just ask. I can put them in the comments below. But like you can tell one of the changes is the sun and the little <clears throat> patchwork stars are darker. Get a up close of the cute little witch and her funky horse. And let's not overlook the one over one. Hopefully I'm getting that where you can see it. So that's finish one. I probably, <laughs> I really honed in on this one and I probably, I had half of it done and I probably worked on it for about a month to finish it up. So that's this one. Thankfully, my, um, my in-laws got me a Michael's gift certificate for Christmas, and that's probably going to get framed with the Michael's gift certificate. The next finish I have comes out of Blackbird Designs Loose Feather Summer. This is a three-part series that does this design and then of course the other parts. What I have stitched is a sow that we started previously, me and a few other ladies, and it's the damn bird. <laughs> it is, what do they call it? The partridge sewing box. I pulled my own colors for this. I did it, I think this is a piece of Lakeside Linen Sand Dune. But I pulled colors that I had in stash and I got them stitched up. And I originally thought that I would make a little pillow out of him, but I just love him so much. I think I'm gonna find like a really wide, chunky, 70s feeling wooden frame and put him in that and maybe put him up in our bedroom. But he's got some little, little straight stitch mohawk He's got some lazy daisy thingamabobs there, his little eyes and Algerian eyelet, and the rest of him's just regular cross stitch. Pretty happy with him. 
happy to have him finished. I guess I got in the mood where if I was going to start 40 things, I wanted to finish three because that math works out. <laughs> the other thing that I finished is my shining piece, Girls in Blue Dresses. And if you've ever seen the movie The Shining, where the creepy little girls in the blue dresses show up at the end of the hallway, the twins, I think you'll get why I call this my shining piece. I stitched this in the called for colors on a piece of picture this plus vellum. I did change the blue of their dresses. I used a classic color works, I believe the classic color works stormy night. And then I would have used the called for for the grass and the path, but the dye lots that I had were identical. So I changed the path to Gentle Arts Maple Syrup. Let's get this a little closer so you can see. Just love it. It turned out really well. I love how the variegation in the grass turned out. I'd like to get this one framed too. This one I might be able to frame myself. Maybe that's something that I'll do because I'll measure it. Maybe it can fit in an eight by 10. We'll see. So that's all the stitching that I did in the past month, but I finished everything that I touched with the exception of what I pulled out today, <clears throat> which is red deer sampler because I wanted to get some work done with it. I haven't gotten enough done where it's worth showing, but just for those of you who aren't familiar with red deer sampler, I have the entire border done, I have this done, I have this done, I have this done, wait, no, I have this done. <laughs> and I was gonna save the deer for last because I thought I would really enjoy that, like, fill-in. I've been working on that today because I decided, I've been working on this so long now, what if I end up having to buy more Schoolhouse Red, or I think that's the color this is, and it's a different dye lot. So I wanna knock the deer out while I still have enough to finish him. I, it, it made sense this morning. Plus it's just nice, easy New Year's Eve stitching. Okay. Let's talk about what happened over Christmas. Everything's okay right now. Um, it's okay as it can be. Everybody's alive. My husband's family is Italian. Well, Sicilian, if he corrects me. So part of their heritage is on Christmas Eve, they do something called the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So I've actually done some reading on it because when I would ask what it was about, they would, I would get different answers. And what I found on the internet is it means different things to different people. That's not important. What is important is that we don't cook that much seafood on Christmas Eve and make the house smell like fish that much. So we go out to eat. We, uh, we went out to eat to a local really nice fish restaurant on Christmas Eve and Jim's parents were in town. Um, his brother's wife, her parents came, my mom came. My mom spends Christmas Eve with us most of the time. Actually, I think she, she spent every Christmas Eve with me and Jim since dad died and gosh, he'll be gone for six years next month in 19 days. So mom was here and she had come up around lunch and she seemed tired, but I didn't think anything about it because it's Christmas, we're all tired. So we go out to eat, we have a nice meal, appetizers, food. Mom had a glass of wine. Only one. I know, Dharma. Come here. Yeah. She's like, no, no, I'm not part of the story. So we, we were dessert. We're eating dessert. Um, we can tell that the staff is, you know, we're one of the last tables. There's a couple of regulars at the bar getting ready to wrap it up but we're having like a little final chit chat paying the checks my mom is sitting here and Jim's mom is across from her and Jim is next to his mom and I noticed that Jim's mom Diane 
Stop, Dharma. She's chewing on a plant. That's not normally there. I noticed that Jim's mom, Diane, starts looking at my mom strangely. And I was talking to Jim's dad, who's across from me, so I wasn't involved in this. And I look next to me at my mom, and she's going like this. And at first I thought, she's, she's being silly. She hears the song, and she's like grooving, because that's totally the kind of thing my mom would do. And if any of you met my mom at the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat, you know that's something she would do. So I was like, Mom, what are you doing? She didn't respond. Mom? So she was completely unresponsive. And um, she was just kind of locked up. And she stayed that way for what felt like forever. But was probably like a minute. And then all of a sudden, she did respond to me when I was like, Mom, Mom. And she said, I, I don't feel very well. And then she went out again. And when she went out this time, she kind of sunk down in her chair. And I'm trying to hold her up. And the lady on the other side, Cindy's mom's trying to hold her up. And we're like, guys, guys, we can't help. So guys come from the bar jim like leaps over the table i don't know what he did and they get her like on the floor and thank god jim's mom is a retired nurse so she's like doing exactly what needs to be done and elevating her feet and cold towel and pillow and talking to her and trying to get her back and somebody's calling 911 and it's a blur um I honestly thought my mom was dying. It was really scary. The The paramedics came. Um, mom came too, before, right before they came. She knew who she was. She knew where she was. She seemed, she wasn't confused, but she was just like, what is going on? Why am I on the floor? I'm really embarrassed. And they did their testing and didn't, they were like, maybe she was just dehydrated. Maybe she got too hot. And she refused to go to the hospital because it's Christmas, Christmas Eve. She doesn't want to mess up anybody's Christmas. Um, you get more at the hospital than you went with. That's my mother's words. And she just didn't want to go. There's nothing wrong with her. She had a bug. Take her home. I can't make her go. Tried to talk her into it. She wouldn't do it. Can't make her go. So we come back. Oh, and I asked them repeatedly, did she have a stroke? I think she had a stroke. Just by the way she was holding her left hand, I think she had a stroke. Did you test for that? Yes, we did what test we can do in the back of the ambulance. No sign she had a stroke. So we put her in the car and we drive from the restaurant back to mine and Jim's home where she was already going to spend the night. And we talked his mom into coming home with us because I was scared and Jim was scared. She's a nurse. And so she very happily came home with us. On the way home, mom was nauseous, felt terrible. We continued to like test her temperature, test her blood pressure, um, made her do like, you know, neurological tests and stuff like that. And no signs of anything being wrong other than she's like, my head hurts. I feel nauseous. I just don't feel good. I, I just feel kind of weak now. So the next morning she thinks she's going to drive herself home. She's not, she's not doing that. So we refused to let her drive home an hour and Jim drove her home. We didn't do any of our normal Christmas morning stuff because she just felt bad. So Jim drove her home. Um, I drove Jim's mom over to his brother's house because that's where she was supposed to be. And then I drove up to mom's by myself to pick up Jim and kind of get a lay of the land, what's going on. She just, she refuses to go see anybody until she can go see her doctor on Monday morning. 
What do you do? Oh, Christmas is her birthday. So it's her birthday. Um, she turned 73. And if she knew I told all of you that, she might kill me. So, I mean, she's a grown woman. I, I, I can tell her what I think she should do. She can refuse to do it. So, my sister is also a nurse. And she lives really close to mom and is like, I'm going to keep checks on her. Let's remember the fact that my brother-in-law had a stroke a year ago in September and is, he's no longer my brother-in-law. He can't walk. He's stopped eating. I mean, he's, he's going downhill. Things are bad. Things are bad. So I'm like, you, this, Cheryl, you don't need to worry about this. This is not what needs to be on your plate. But so I'm back and forth trying to, to take care of mom. My brother's there. And then we decide that because she says she's going to go to the doctor Monday morning. Will she? So my sister and I devise a plan that I'm going to get up really early Monday morning and just call the doctor with my mom and take her. So I get up before the sun's even up, drive the hour to my mom's house, park in her driveway, checking on Life 360 as to whether or not I can tell she's up or not. Doesn't look like she's up. So I decide, I'll just call her. So we chat for a little bit. She tells me she's feeling okay. She still has a little bit of a headache. Yes, she's definitely going to call the doctor's office, but she's waiting until 8 a.m. when they open. And I'm like, okay, well, um... It's 7.30 now. I'm in your driveway. Can I come in? <laughs> so she's like, you girls thinking you know what's good for me. So I go in and we hang out together for a little bit. And I call the doctor's office while she takes a shower. Get her an appointment for 2 p.m. that day. So I stay with her all day, drive her to the doctor's office. He says he thinks she has, he gave a fancy name for it, but he just thinks she passed out. I'm like, yeah, that's not what happened. It's cute that you think that, but that's not what happened. I, I was there. I saw it. There was more to it. I'm sorry. I, And that's one reason my sister wanted me to go because she knew I'd be like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's, we need tests. And he said, well, I do think it's a good idea to run tests just to be sure um, something I would do anyway, just in case I'm, you know, what my gut instinct is wrong. We, he ordered a CAT scan, vascular scan, a, um, an echo and said he was going to do a referral to a neurologist. So they could do an EEG and I was like, all right, great. Awesome. So we get all those appointments except for neurology lined up because apparently that's hard to get. And the next day, bright and early, I drive mom to all these appointments. So we do the CAT scan. I mean, everything's just going like clockwork. We even go and walk around at Hobby Lobby for a little while because we're like, you know, we've got this time to kill between appointments. She feels okay. She's still got a little bit of a headache, which is weird and concerning. So we go to eat lunch, eat our entire lunch, and I step away to the restroom and when I come back, she's just sitting there at the table. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, the doctor called. They've already reviewed my CAT scan and I got really bad news. I have a brain tumor. What? <laughs> so that's where we are. Uh, since then, she's had an MRI, which had better news. We did an MRI the next day, and the doctor said that he can't say conclusively, but based on, because an MRI gives you a much better picture and idea of what's going on, but he said that based on the characteristics of the mass in the MRI, he believes enough to say it looks like it, that it's a benign cyst. He did say that the what another thing that the MRI told them is that she had had a small stroke. They can't tell when it happened. Is that what happened at dinner? 
maybe. Did she maybe have a seizure at dinner? We don't know. Something happened. Probably caused by the, the tumor, the cyst. I don't know if there's a difference. All of this is new to me. And that's where we are. We're waiting on neurology, hoping things are positive, hoping that this can be shrunk or removed and she no longer has any issues out of it and continues to live a, a longer life because she's spunky and she has plans. She was planning to go to Cancun in a couple of months, so we'll see how that goes. And with the rise of COVID again, I told her she probably, even before this news, I told her, you're probably not going to Cancun. So that's where we are. It's been a weird Christmas. I should probably call and check on my mother in a minute because I'm sure I've been driving her crazy, but she wants us to just go about our lives and whatever will be will be and leave her alone. <laughs> but you know what? I would be the same way. I, I was just fine before I knew this. I'm just fine right now. Let me live my old lady life in solitude without you all up in my business 24-7. I maybe should have showed you the positive things first, but we'll end on a positive note. We're waiting for a neurology appointment and to know what's next. I have plants and a couple of other things. I've discovered that I kind of just like more common plants. They're kind of my jam. And maybe I like the more uncommon varieties of those common plants. Um, this is just a pothos, which if you go to any big box store, they're going to have 20 to 30 <clears throat> golden pothos. They just are. This is a neon pothos. And it's one of my favorites. Look how bright it is. And look at, where'd you go, buddy? this leaf. Look how cool you are, you little funky little devil. This sits on top of my refrigerator. I long for the day when it starts to trail down the side of the refrigerator. This is a Hartley philodendron. I'm not as great with philodendrons. I want them to love me more than they do, but they're a little bit more delicate than a pothos. But I love this one because of the way the leaves look. This is a philodendron brandy. It's got some new leaves coming in. It's got a leaf there on the way out, but such is life. Things die and new leaves are born. It's the way life works. So I try to be okay with uh, the new leaves going away because it's what's supposed to happen. This one loves humidity, so it sits over there almost right on top of my humidifier and it keeps it springy and boingy. This is a Scandapsis. It's a Scandapsis Trubii Moonlight. got thicker leaves and they're like all silvery looking. That's why it's called Moonlight. And since I've had it, it's started to trail a little, which is pretty exciting because these things don't grow fast. Look how pretty it is. This is my second one of these. Um, my other one, I think there was just some root issues with it when I got it because some of it died off and it's in the sunroom with what's left. It's fine. It looks as healthy as this one, what's left. But what's left, it's not as full and beautiful. One more plant. This is another pothos. This is an unusual variety of pothos called a Cebu Blue. And you can tell the leaves are light and veiny. And it's really pretty. The leaves are also more elongated. 
and sits over there on top of my bookshelf, being all big and bouncy. Okay, and a couple other things that I'll just show you. Things that I'm into at the moment. Jim filled my stocking full of turtles. One of the best candies. I don't know if this is something that is only available in the U.S., but they're basically like chocolate pecan caramel clusters. Basically, heaven in your mouth. I bought this little weirdo on Amazon, and it has made cooking much easier. It's just a silicone sleeve. And... What it's good for is when you have a clove of garlic, you stick it in there and roll it on the table and it peels it. And my brother's like, yeah, I just slam my knife against it and then peel it off. And you know, it was a couple of dollars, but it makes me happy and makes my life easier. A couple of gifts that Jim got me for Christmas. He bought me this hand towel that brings me immense joy. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to really use it, but we'll see. It's my new favorite kitchen towel. Moist. And he bought me this book that I have not read yet. And I do, like most of you, I'm sure, I spend a lot of my time stitching and not as much time reading as I used to. But he bought me this. He didn't even know it existed. He saw it at the bookstore and thought, Emily's going to want to read that. This is her favorite podcast. So, of course. And it was good timing. Because guess who has spent a lot of time in the hospital and doctor's office waiting rooms recently and is really glad to have a book to read. Because that works better than taking stitching. So that's it guys. Um, I'll get this edited and, and uploaded soon. I'll go ahead and film my other one. Just keep us in your thoughts. I'm not a praying person, but if you are, do that. It's not going to hurt. So just, just keep my mom in your thoughts and hopefully this can be handled and it'll be like it never happened. That'd be pretty great. So, Happy New Year, and I'll see you soon with 40 Starks.